Well, joining us now via webcam is Nando Sigona, a migration researcher and deputy director of the Institute for Research into Superdiversity at the University of Birmingham. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this evening on BBC News. Um, first of all, um, I assume you welcome, or do you welcome, this new um, about uh, face by the Prime Minister that suggests more unaccompanied children will be allowed into the UK? I certainly welcome uh, the change of position by the government, uh, but there are a number of caveats that we must be... It's really important not to just um, take it as for granted that they are going to implement it, in a sense, because their track record with this kind of commitment is not necessarily very good. Mm, I suspect one of the caveats is the number. Um, there is no detail as to that at the moment, how many more children will be allowed here. What do you think the figure should be? I think the, the, the figure of 3,000 that was in the first version of the DAPS amendment was a, a fair one. And uh, I have my research um, on unaccompanied minors in EU and in, in the UK it really shows that in the last couple of years, the share of unaccompanied minors of the UK has decreased significantly. So while, for example, in 2008, um, the UK was receiving about 35% of the unaccompanied minors in Europe, uh, in 2015, this was roughly 3%. So the country can do more uh, uh, to contribute to um, uh, improve the situation of refugees within the European Union. Mm. But Kent is one of those counties that is having a lot of problems dealing with um, unaccompanied uh, children uh, and the cost uh, of that. Um, they have a backlog of some 800 children that they're still trying to find decent accommodation for. Um, the pressure on local services and on local councils is difficult at a time of austerity. Yeah, I think there has been um, a lot of discussion about what is the fair number. In, uh, in 2009, the UK was receiving about 4,000 uh, unaccompanied asylum-seeking children. Uh, and on over, in, at that time, especially in the 2000s, 3,000 was a kind of the normal number for the UK. In the last couple of years, we had seen a significant decrease, uh, which goes in a completely different direction than uh, the rest of, of Europe. The problem is that now local authorities are facing and nothing to do with the number per se, but, but it's a result of the ca significant cut of the resources and that they are experiencing. So one of the main concerns with this uh, today pledge by David Cameron is that by um, transferring the responsibility to identify how many, num how many people may be able to arrive in the UK to local authorities who are already strained, is basically committing to a very small number. Mm, I mean, the government have to put up the money to deal with some of these children coming in, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it's clearly there is an issue of how much, uh, how many resources are going to be available on one end, but also the other key issue is that the crisis is now. So it's really important that the, we move very rapidly from a pledge into implementation. If you look at the commitment uh, um, from last year to resettle 20,000 Syrian refugees within five years in UK, in the, la the first year alone, we have hardly seen, you know, a very tiny percentage of these 20,000 have been resettled. So we really need to move quickly and rapidly because the situation is, is, is danger. There's a position of danger right now in Europe mm. for these young people. Sure. And it hasn't been made clear as yet where these children will be allowed to come from, um, obviously from Europe, but their original uh, uh, um, home, whether it be Syria or Eritrea or wh wherever. Um, the suggestion is that, as far as you're concerned, and certainly the Refugee Council is concerned, this should be all uh, refugee children who are in Europe, um, not just those from, say, Syria. The, the definition of a refugee, according to the UN Convention, doesn't make any difference about nationality. So if there is a ground for uh, international protection, if there is fear of persecution, there is no difference if someone comes from Syria or from Afghanistan. Because the suggestion has been up until now that uh, the government will only look at taking in children from camps near the conflict zones. Yeah, but there are, the conflict is not just in Syria. There is a conflict mm. all over the world, you know, even uh, in, in other regions. So the point is, I guess, is that if you look at the data, um, the largest group of uh, unaccompanied minors in Europe has always been, for a number of years, the young Afghani uh, people. In the last couple of years, the number of Syrians has increased. And clearly, it's important that we look at the 
situation of the young Syrians. But let's not forget also the other groups that need uh, protection. Uh, they're vulnerable. Sure. And those people who would say, look, some of these children are already in France, they're already in Germany, they're not in hostile areas, clearly. Um, why do they need to be brought over to the UK? What's your answer to them? It's an issue. There are two reasons why I think that the UK should do more. One is an issue of EU solidarity, of sharing the responsibility for a crisis. Um, that is not just about Germany or about Sweden, but it's about the European Union as, as a union. On the, the second issue is about the fact that Germany, for example, in 2015 has received 14,000 unaccompanied minors. Sweden alone received about 35,000, which is more than what the UK has received in the last 10 years, that is about 23,000. So there is more that can be done. Clearly, both Germany, Sweden, but also Italy, they are receiving a much larger number than in the past. And they, their services are under strain at the moment. So the UK can intervene and help them. Okay, Nando Sigona, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.